Hello, my name is Luke and welcome to this PyTorch tutorial series. In this video, we're taking a look at the decoder only transformer architecture. If you're new to the channel, all the code you see is available in my GitHub repo here. Our link is in the description below. Also, this video is a part of a larger PyTorch tutorial series. As I said, in this video, we're looking at the decoder only architecture. In the previous video, we introduced the transformer with the encoder only architecture where we used self-attention to encode a whole sequence of inputs and then perform text classification. In this video, we're going to continue on with our look at transformers and look at the decoder-only architecture for text or next token prediction. To construct our decoder-only transformer architecture, we're gonna do a very similar thing to our encoder-only architecture. However, we're gonna to have to modify the self-attention layers because we'll run into issues when performing next token prediction if we just use a straight self-attention layer. To explain what I mean, let's have an example. Let's imagine we have the sequence. So the black cat is outside. Now with our self-attention, if we remember, we have the ability for every token to query every other token in our sequence, pulling information back and forth in order to build up our representation. That's good for our text classification where we want to encode the entire input sequence and then perform prediction. But for our next token prediction, this is going to cause an issue. So when we want to perform next token prediction, we want every token in the sequence to try and predict the next token that occurs in the input sequence. The issue with just using straight self-attention is that our token in our sequence can just directly query what the next token in the sequence is going to be. It can then pull that information to its output and always get the correct answer. It'll always have 100% accuracy because it can just look forward to work out what the next token in the sequence is. This of course is going to be an issue at inference time where we want to generate a sequence based on some prompt or based on some initial sequence. So if we randomly sampled the token the as the first word in our sentence and we wanted to then sample what the next word in the sequence is our token the is going to try to query the next token in the sequence to pull that information to itself at its current time step however when we're generating there is no next token in the sequence there is nothing after the current token and so a model here is going to fail it's probably going to produce some nonsense output because it's trying to do something that it can't do so how do we fix this well it's quite straightforward all we need to do is to prevent a token from being able to query the next tokens in the sequence so we still want a token to be able to query tokens that occurred previously in the sequence so black can query the cat can query black and the as well as itself that's okay but what we don't want to happen is for a token to query later tokens in the sequence so how do we do this how can we modify our self attention layer in order to prevent a token from querying later tokens in the sequence well if you cast your mind back to how attention works and how the attention mechanism works or if you go back to our what is attention video you'll know that in order to perform the query from one token to another we have our query and our key vectors so our query comes from the token the in this case, and we get a key from the token black. In order to get the attention weight, we would multiply dot product in this case, our query with our key to get some value. To get our whole attention map, we would need to have a key from each token in the sequence. So you can see we've got a key for black cat is outside. There would also be one for that in this case, but I've just ignored it here. And we would transpose this keys matrix now and we perform the matrix multiplication between our query and all our keys and what we would get is a single value for every query and every key value we would then softmax that to get our softmax scores and we would then multiply that by our values and with our self-attention every single token in our input sequence would have its own query to query all of the keys of all the other tokens in our sequence from that we would get our attention map which contains the softmax weights for every token querying all the other tokens. So every single row would be the score for a token querying the other tokens. So if we say we have a token per word, we'll have five tokens in our sequence here. And so we'll get a five by five attention map. So the first row of our attention map would be for the token the. Let's just assign these to some letters. So this first letter here, A, 
that would contain the softmax score for the querying itself. B would be the querying black, C would be the querying cat, and then D and E would be is and outside. And we can fill this out for all the other tokens as well. What can we do to modify this attention map in order to stop a token from querying tokens that come later in the sequence? Well, as you can see, as we've organized it here, these values B to E correspond to the weights of the sort of attention map or the querying a token that's later on in the sequence. But all we need to do is basically zero these values here, usually before the soft max is actually applied. And then we would get for this first row here, because there's only one value, after the soft max, we should get a one and then all zeros. So if we were to now look at black, so the first one, let's just call it A2, would be black querying the, B2 would be black querying itself, C2 would be cat, and then is and outside. So A2 is okay because black is querying a token before it in the sequence. B2 is okay because it's just querying itself, but we want to get rid of the next three tokens, which again correspond to black querying a token that happens after it in the sequence. So we can continue this on for cat is and outside. And what we'd have is this pattern of zeros at the top and then the softmax values at the bottom. So hopefully you can see that all we need to do is zero these values in our attention map and we remove this problem of a token querying later tokens. This masking is called causal masking because by doing this masking, we are controlling the sort of direction in which information can flow causally through time or through our sequence. Let's see how this is actually done in practice. So like I said, we're gonna be performing text prediction as well or our next token prediction. We first saw this in the LSTM text generation and all of the code other than the actual architecture is pretty much exactly the same. We're gonna be using the AG News dataset again, but we're gonna train on predicting the next token in the sequence for this title and article content. I'm just gonna skip all this for now, the tokenization. We already covered that in that LSTM text generation video. So check that one out. So if we go to our model creation here, we can have a look at our transformer block for our decoder only architecture. The overall structure of this network is very similar to the encoder only, except we have this causal masking here. Our transformer is constructed by these repeating blocks of attention and then a feed forward MLP. That's what we're looking at here, just one of those blocks. And if we look at the forward pass of that, you can see where we do this causal masking. So you can see I've got this variable called mask here that I've created by using porch ones to create this L by L matrix. So that's the length of the sequence. It's a square matrix like our example. And then I'm using the function torch try you or upper triangular to turn this into an upper triangular matrix. So as an example here torch try you, we can see we construct our matrix and we can use the try you function and it will basically zero the values below the diagonal. We can also have an offset for the diagonal. So a positive one in this case will also include the diagonal. A negative one just shifts where we actually are zeroing in respect to the diagonal. We then convert this to a bool. So zeros become falses, ones become true. And to see why we need to structure it in this way, we can have a look at the multi-headed attention documentation. We go to the forward method and down to attention masks. You can see we can specify this 2D or 3D mask to perform the actual masking of the attention map. So you can see it must be all by S where L is the number of queries, S is the number of keys. In our example with self-attention, they're the same. And you can see, for a binary mask, a true indicates the corresponding position is not allowed to attend. So similar to our key padding mask we saw before, a true value indicates that we're going to remove whatever value there or zero, whatever value is there, in this case, in our attention map. So if we go back to our mask, we're gonna have ones and we're going to remove all of the ones lower than the diagonal. You can see I've actually got an offset. So even the values on the diagonal will be set to zero and only ones in the top corner. And then we'll convert that to a bool. So all those ones will be true. And if you remember, the true values will be ignored or zeroed. So what that might look like for our example here is so for the first row with the, we should have a false on the diagonal and that will be true, true, true. True. So that can attend to itself, but not black, cat, is, or outside. And we can fill this out for all the other rows as well. And that should be the structure of our causal mask we want to use. Again, false is indicating that this spot can be attended to. Let's go back to our code implementation. You can see that once we've constructed this mask, we can pass it to our multi-headed attention as the attention mask parameter. Note here that we only need to produce one 2D mask, and this will be used by all of the sequences in our batch. All of our sequences 
have the causal direction in the same direction and they're all the same length because we pad them and so the exact same causal mask can be used and so we just need to provide one 2d mask it is also possible to provide a 3d mask if you want to have different causal masking for different sequences in your batch here we don't need to do that as for the rest of the architecture it's very similar to our encoder only architecture you can see we've got our embeddings for our tokens, our positional embeddings to encode the position information, and we stack our transformer blocks as well. And we have our final FC out. So we do our embedding of our tokens, we do our positional embeddings, we add those on, and we pass those through our stack of transformer blocks, including the padding mask as well to remove the padding tokens. Unlike in the classification example, we're gonna put all the embeddings through the final connected layer so that we get a prediction for every token in our sequence that causal masking is preventing a token from being able to query tokens later in the sequence and stops it from effectively cheating at the task we look now at the model instantiation you can see again very similar to the encoder only we can define the number of those blocks we want the number of heads per multi-headed attention block and we define our optimizer we're going to train with mixed precision so that it goes a bit faster and again using our cross entropy loss we're just doing classification here let's go to our training loop again very similar to the lstm text prediction we have our input batch of strings we use our transform to turn those into tokens we have our input sequence we're going to apply a random token drop transform in order to just with regularization and our output targets for our model is just the input tokens shifted across one so that we're predicting the next token in our sequence we pass the input sequence into our model it'll do that causal masking with our self-attention layer we'll get the predictions and then we'll use our cross entropy loss here again we're masking the output of our loss so we are not reducing it here in our loss function so it won't average over the elements we're using this mask which is again the padding mask to not include the tokens where we would have predicted padding in our actual loss calculation because we don't really care if our model is trained to produce those extra padding tokens because they come after the end of sequence token so i've already trained this it takes about two hours to get the 100 epochs with the mixed precision and you can see we train for just over 80,000 iterations and this probably could go on for a bit longer as well so to now test our model we can just take a test sequence from our test set there we go so if you remember how we've organized the data set is we've taken the article title and the article contents and separated them by a colon so we were just performing next token prediction during training during testing what we're going to do is we're going to get an article title and then put a colon and then we're going to feed that into our model and get it to complete the sequence because we've separated our title from our contents with the colon we're going to prompt our model to generate the contents of the article based on the title so let's look at our generation loop we take those initial tokens from the actual title of the article and we put them into a list we then concatenate all the tokens to a single tensor put them through our model get the output prediction distribution and then we sample from that distribution again scaling down the logits by the temperature get the next token add that onto our list and then we go again, we can concatenate all the tokens now with the new token as well into our input sequence, put that through our model and get the next token prediction, stopping when we've either hit 100 iterations or our model produced the end of sequence token. So we can just run that now and we can see what we got. So here's the output we got. The first section here is the article title that we provided as a prompt and the rest of it is what we got out of our model. Anima Pardons Castro Plotters, Panama City, Panama, Panama City's president Saturday rejected a Cuban exile of Panama's Fidel Castro's wishes to escape from a fractured far wing presidential Fidel Castro. So we can run this again. And each time we'll get a new sequence for the same title. So if we have a look at the probability distribution for the last token in the sequence, you can see at a very high probability of predicting that end of sequence token. If we were to stop the sequence before it hits, the end of sequence token we can have a look at the distribution of some intermediate tokens so the token a was sampled from this distribution here and you can see we had some tokens with high probabilities and some with low and some with very low and we're just trying to build up this distribution by training the next token prediction again we're never going to get 100 percent accuracy and all we want is a distribution of probable next tokens tokens that make sense as coming next in the sequence so that's all i wanted to cover in this video 
Hopefully you found that interesting and useful. Again, if you're new to the channel, check out those previous videos and subscribe to stay tuned for the next video where we're going to look at encoder decoder architectures. So combining the two architectures we've seen into one to perform sequence to sequence processing. Thanks, and I'll catch you in the next one.